All right, everyone, welcome back for the episode of Carnivore Trades. Today's Friday, October 25th, 2024. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Hey, let's get into it today. So, markets today um, down 20 cents there on the spider. So, nothing really major uh, happening here at the end of the day. But if we look at the makeup here, um, a couple of things happened. So, this morning we had kind of a what looked like it was going to be a gap and go, pretty big squeeze effect here. And um, you can see ES just kind of inching up, inching up, inching up. Market opens, big uh, surge to the upside here. And um, we couldn't hold the gains. So I'll say for bears here, you did two things. Um, if we look at the intraday, lower highs, lower highs, tried to break out, lower high there, you know, essentially back checking to that trend line and be closed below 5820, AKA 580. So at face value, you have a failed breakout here. So that tells me we probably are going to have to do some more backing and filling here. Um, is that, is that, you know, it's really just kind of that simple. It's not like we're seeing a huge sell signal. The bears didn't really follow through. We still have uh, higher lows here technically, but, you know, they did defend the levels they needed to. And um, I think you have some trapped longs like at the highs too. I mean, anybody who brought, you know, bought above that trend line is, is now trapped in here. So I think we will at least have to do some backing and filling. And um, we'll see if bears can break this trend line, then we could actually see some, some actual technical damage for once. And, um, you know, maybe with a 50 moving average, maybe 5,700, 5,675 could come into play. But outside of that, tech was pretty strong. We have NVDA closing above the previous weekly high. You know, it did come off the highs and it only barely closed above, but it did do that. And you had Tesla still showing leadership. Um, again, we talked about 270 and that's where it stalled out today. Uh, right there, 269.49 uh, was the high. So you had those tech, you know, tech stocks still showing leadership. Uh, Microsoft had a good day, although it came off the highs, a um, little higher high there on the daily. Google's been quiet lately, but that was up nicely as well. Amazon and uh, Meta were up also. So kind of carrying the market here a little bit. IGV um, up half a percent. CrowdStrike took a hit during the middle of the day. It did come off the lows. I think there was some... Uh, Talk about the IRS, um, one of their, something, some report was misleading, I guess, something like that, I, either way. But tech was leading. If we look at the queues, we did tag 500, perfect gex wall there. I talked about that this morning. Um, and we backed off of it. By the way, the queues have been sideways for a month now. There's the 26th, today's the 25th. So we've gone nowhere. Like we've been struggling with this July Island here for quite some time. And um, yeah, you got the higher lows, higher highs. So it does seem like inevitable, but um, again, they're still, still struggling with that area. Um, so markets here, not terrible. It, it wasn't a complete, you know, rejection. It wasn't like an engulfing candle. We didn't break the, the lows from the week, you know, Wednesday's low or anything like that. But bears, you know, showed up here and that tells me we, you know, may need to see a little bit more. Um, you know, sideways action. I will say oil did take a pretty big hit, or she's got a pretty big pop, rather, um, in the middle of the day. And there was really no news behind this that I saw. And right around that time is when the, the spiders started to kind of fade a little. And um, is that, you know, we're going to get some Middle East headline. Maybe maybe it's a fake out. Maybe they can gap us up on Monday. In fact, I think that's, you know, quite possible. Even if we do uh, have to do more backing and filling, I could see a gap up Monday, a futures gapping up, and then maybe kind of coming back in. But overall, um, not a terrible session all across the board, but definitely, you know, for bulls here, you were looking for that breakout today. You were looking for a trend move and it got rejected. So usually that, when that happens, it tells you you got some more time to eat off the clock here. IWM, um, again, gapping up, gapping crap there as well. This was definitely weaker. A lot of that had to do with financials. KRE, outside move down. XLF was definitely weak. Red to green day engulfing the last three days of action. That hurt the uh, Russell there, although it's still holding this trend line here. If it breaks this trend line, is it the end of the world? No, you still have room for higher lows here. You're still in an uptrend. But um, short term, you know, we'd have to do a little bit more of a retrace potentially. Dow here was on the weaker side as well. Again, remember Dow up, or excuse me, Dow down, Russell down. What's probably going to be up? NASDAQ, right? 
what was the configuration today? Exactly that. But Caterpillar down 62, or Dow down 62 base points. Caterpillar down a quarter of a percent. That came in. Um, Goldman down two and a quarter. UNH was up earlier and came back in. So those three kind of put pressure on the Dow towards the middle of the day. More, mostly Goldman. But um, again, gap into the 20 MA and we went lower. So that's like the first real sign of weakness we've seen in a while. Right? We get below the 20, then we go back up into it and we reject it. I don't think we've seen anything like that on any of the indices in, in a while. I mean, maybe the Russell, yeah, I mean, maybe the Russell a little bit. Not, not really, honestly. That's probably the first bit of weakness that we've seen. Like, and again, it's not a ton, but just the fact that we got below the 20 and then tried to reclaim it and couldn't. And then same time, you know, you got SPX closing below our master level this week. We've talked about that the last three, four days, 5820. And failing there. So again, you know, we might see some more backing filling. I would welcome it. I want more than a 1% dip, right? Like I can't, like I just can't chase, like I'm not chasing Meta up here into earnings. I'm not chasing Microsoft into earnings. You know, I, I've been telling you guys I like Netflix for a while. I get not, I'm not going to buy it 1% off all-time highs, you know. I would like a real dip here. So I know, I know it's a lot. I know 3% is a lot to ask for, but, you know, hopefully we can get that at some point here. Um, marijuana stocks today, real quick, not, not, to, not a ton going on, excuse me. TCN and F is still the leader. And you got hourly bull flag here. So that's going into Trump and Joe Rogan, which is the biggest fundamental thing for this uh, sector in a long time. Um, I think that should be out tomorrow or later tonight. I was kind of hoping it wouldn't be because I don't want to see a big gap up Monday. I think gap ups are for selling in this sector. So that doesn't mean that a macro high is in place, but you could get a little bit of sell the news if, if anything happens there. And if they don't talk about anything, which I think is very unlikely, um, then you really might see some weakness, but I doubt it. SMH here up 1.1. Again, kept coming off the highs though. It was strong early, came back in. This bear, this inside pattern here, there's volume behind it. So I don't think the semis are necessarily done going, you know, done through their backing and filling yet. They're still got to carve out a base and we could even see one more retest of this trend line here too and a 200 moving average. And you'd still have a higher low if that happened. So nothing great, nothing terrible. IGV, we talked about possible lower high there. Like to see some more backing and filling in that. Transport's here fractionally higher. That's still doing fine. Interest rates today um, did back off again. On, well, sorry, on the long end, rather. Or excuse me, uh, I'm, I made that mistake. They were up earlier. Interest rates got a bid by the end of the day. Two year up two basis points. Uh, 30s, you know, up two pretty much across the board. Um, I think they're overbought here, but not, I should say overbought, but I think they've had a nice run over here. But if they just bake here, they can go higher. Um, so I think they've topped out locally for now, but you got jobs next week and they're trying to win an election. I'm telling you, they're not going to, they're not going to have, like I told you last month, they're not going to have a shitty number. It's, it's going to be good. They'll make it what it, what they need it to be. Earnings next week, jobs next, by the way, yeah, earnings next week, jobs next week, PCE next week. Then the week after that, we get the election. Next day we got FOMC. So we're loaded here for two weeks. So get your sleep this weekend because you're not going to get chance to rest in for you know a couple weeks now but if this just does this it can go higher twos here's the problem for the market again if there's something that's going to hurt this market it's this yield right here forget the tens just look at the two. Oh, but mortgage rates i don't care mortgage rates that doesn't care about mortgage rates fed funds only cares about this right here so we go higher we're not getting cuts pure and simple that's what the market cares about. It wants its drugs. All right. Um, XHB down one point six dollar uh, sixty two, so one and a third decline. Yeah, closing the week below one twenty is not good. So XHB, one two three four five weeks of price action wiped out with volume. So XHB definitely in trouble, and that's the first time I've said that in a long, long time. 
So next level here, you know, you got to go to probably about 113.50 and then 110.111. So XHB, I'd say it's in a little bit of trouble. VNQ, um, possible lower high now. So engulfing candle there with volume. That's two days in a row we've had volume on the sell. So VNQ backing off. Still a decent weekly chart, you know, if it just bases here. But possible lower highs on the daily. XLF we mentioned earlier down 52 cents. Engulfing candle of the last three days. The trend is still up though, no damage. But definitely a good reversal candle. KRE again, same thing. Trend is still up, no problems, but engulfing candle. ABE closing right at the lows of the week. And then broker dealers here flat. So financials, definitely a little bit of a culprit there. Uh, XHB, a little bit of a culprit. And we'll see if that continues next week. Uh, oil up 2%. You know, you have an inside pattern here. So the more this bases, I think the more I like it. I think it can go early next week if it wants to. Like I said, it got a really big bid in the middle of the day. And it's holding those gains right now. What's well, interesting, I've mentioned this several times, but XLE, that's the third day in a row that oil's held up and XLE has been flat. So this is being held down and I think that this will rotate after the election. We're up or, you know, regardless of who wins. Speaking of energy, um, a sector I think is interesting. I don't have a signal on here. I don't really like the chart of TAN, although it did get a good bid today. I don't really like ICLN either. Maybe at 13 it's interesting, but... I think if, you can, if we can get a pattern here, if we can get pattern or something on, on one of these solar plays, could be interesting. Why? Because Trump is already priced in to win. That means downside is priced in. Uh, if Trump does win, do you see a quick shoot down? Possibly. But then that's it, right? It's likely priced in. If he doesn't win, they're going to go like this. So I think risk reward here in solar for at the very least a bounce is probably pretty good. Again, I don't, have a, I don't have a clean setup here to look at, but it's an idea to watch over the next couple of weeks. XOP up a penny. Still think the lows are in on these. And OIH trying to get that falling, which we talked about that overshoot yesterday. There it is. Need to see follow through off of that. And if we do, I think you can get a pretty solid bid. CCJ still backing off. No real problems, though, just an uh, overbought condition, just working that off. NM and NJ, essentially the same thing. Nat gas with another good day here, although it uh, kind of paused by the end. We got a weekly close above 250. We're going to be on the Z pretty soon. Um, and that was up four cents. So I think Nat gas has one more rally going into November. Uh, dollar index just won't go down. Although it still hasn't made a new high, so we could have a high in place still. The 104.50 is resistance until proven otherwise. My guess is it probably has backing and filling to do, but, you know, it's been strong lately. Gold still hasn't taken out that reversal candle high. Again, not as much volume as I'd really like to see to call, comfortably call a top. Um, and I still think this can go up all the way to about 28.50, believe it or not. But um, we'll see. I'd just be cautious on it. I wouldn't be, a, I would, certainly wouldn't be a fresh, wouldn't you know, be opening fresh longs, but I would just be trailing and, you know, as to say, it's a hold. Silver has done nothing since 35. Um, you don't want to see it below 33. That would be uh, not so good. And then we've got like GDX, which came in pretty sharply yesterday. GDXJ as well. SIL and SILJ. Also down, so watch those miners too. If they start dumping out more, could be a sign. Platinum down a dollar, nothing there. No real problems, just backed off of our trend line. Palladium still going, uh, 1200. Next level is 1250. Very nice weekly. Um, vehicle I like is Sprott here, and highest weekly volume of all time. W bottom looks pretty good. You guys know that's been my play for a while. 
Copper just is stuck here. <laughs> Copper not doing anything. I, I don't have a good read on it. Um, weekly, you know, inside bar, pullback, still inside bar, and it can still has room for higher lows. The daily just is doing nothing here. Um, this won't last too long, though. I mean, there's, you're, you're going to have you're gonna need a move here soon. So this is really tight. It's getting ready. Volatility will be coming probably next week, probably on jobs or, or one of those, those catalysts. Maybe even a fake down, maybe a liquidity grab and then a, and a rally. We'll see. Anyway, Bitcoin just basing below 69. No problems. Nothing's changed. So no issues there. No problems. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Uh, face value below 58.20. The bears showed up. They showed up. I mean, yeah, we have not closed above that. Um, and he, they did defend that trend line. And you know what I like is that they... they you had this look this side looked like a gap and go like this was a trend day like all time highs coming vol crush friday just slam it you know and they you know they came back in pretty nicely and you even like we could even take this and uh if we want to just adjust get it right there you know we're gonna just line it up to where the market is going yeah you can just say like look at this one two three four up oh, there's your back test and then a, right at face value that's what happened right on the other hand, you still have room for higher lows here. So that's your positive for the bulls. Uh, I think likelihood, probability say we probably need to do some more backing filling. I'd like to see a dip. I mean, at least, please. I mean, like, I know, like, this was a gen. I didn't know that we were supposed to put our life savings in at the lows, you know, the other day. Like, 1% off of all time highs. But, um, yeah, you know, we finally came back in today and We'll see from there. Um, below 5,800 on a close, I think, would so show a little bit more weakness. And uh, could open the door for some selling here. So anyways, guys, I'll wrap it up here. Again, you guys have a great weekend. Take care. Come find me on ConovoTrades.com. See you guys all next week.